hit it. Baby, one, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You are not rocking with the best. It's not some baby. One time, still shining. Respect my swag. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And this is another episode. A swingers after dark. It's time to get live. And this is your host. Nah, son, baby, 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 baby. Let's go, champ. You ready? I'm ready. I was born ready. So just got it. I, I, obviously, I got to agree, right? <laughs> yeah. You good? You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Microphone chat one two one two. This is your host, not son, be back. And this is another episode of Swingers After Dark. And I'm with Miss Juicy. Yes, yes. Yeah, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I knew her before I knew her. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew her before we got into the lifestyle. And what's crazy is that I did not know that was Miss Juicy until I saw her vanilla page. I was like, oh shit. That's her, but mm-hmm. I didn't know because you know mm-hmm. you 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 know I, I was dating Miss Jamaica. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you knew I was with Jamaica. I remember. And and um, <laughs> and y'all had the um uh, a blog talk show together. Yes. And I remember I didn't know that was you because you was a vendor at one of her events. Yeah. And you know we was talking, shooting the shit, and the funny thing is she kept looking at us. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? She, I don't know if you noticed, but she kept looking at, at us because back then I was like a super creep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This was like 12, this was like a long time ago, like 12. 12 sw- yeah, it was like yeah. over a de- it was like over a decade ago. So it, I was like, it was more than a decade. You're absolutely right. Yeah, so I was a little bit hot in the ass. So she wasn't <laughs> watching you per se. She was just watching me. But you yeah. just so happen to be in a proximity. So when I met you in the LS and I noticed your, your, you know, your real name, I was like, oh shit! So that's such and such, such and such, and they had a show together, the Max Show. Yes, we did. Yes, yeah, we I, did. I, I did. I did not know until, until years later, like recently, like not recently, like at least four years ago. Right. Right. You know, when when you was with the Karate Kid, are you still with the Karate Kid? <laughs> The MMA fighter, no. Unfortunately, we are wait. no longer together. Wait, wait, see, see, I'm mad, yo. Mm-hmm. I- I'm mad because you did not tell me. I don't you think know? I told anybody, you know. I I, I probably and, and like you said, we are friends on my vanilla page, so you get to see um movement a little differently um than some people will because we've been friends for too long and so nowadays people are seeing me talk that single talk on my page you know so it's not blurted out it's not i don't it's not as heavy on the single as it would be when i was in a relationship like when i was in a relationship it was heavy on the relationship and then you go up and down and then you don't know if they're in a relationship or not and once it was done i was just really quiet and was more about personal care um self-love you know and stuff like that so you know yeah so that's why nobody really knew yeah see that's why i fucks with you that's why i respect you because nobody knew like i kind of knew because you know you were no longer taking pictures together yeah and you were you weren't going to you know events and i kind of knew you know you kind of but what I respect about you is that you did not have to make an announcement. Now I'm single. Usually, you know, a lot of a chicks when they break up with their man or they do break up with them, they want to send mm-hmm. like the back signal for dick to yeah, let no. everybody know they're single. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to guess. I was like, no, oh, okay, but but I, I'm gonna have to say this. You know, you 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 kept like dodging me. You kept ducking and dodging <laughs> me, and therefore I had to, you know, I had to do a little something something with your mm-hmm. with your friend with I'm, I'm gonna call her pocahontas <laughs> pocahontas yeah I'm, I'm gonna call her pocahontas mm-hmm. let me close this door because this door you hear me? <laughs> See, even, your dog, even your dog know that we gonna get hot in here 
yes, he know. See, and and that's how far it goes because you said Pocahontas. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about, right? Of course, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so I, I had to I had to slay Pocahontas because mm. you was ducking and dodging me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I, I had to get some out of the deal. Yes, you know, yes, yes. So, so how long have you been in the LS? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Six, maybe fourteen to sixteen years. Anyway, between it's probably more than that. It's probably sixteen years. About sixteen years. Buddy, on your vanilla side, no use in the LS. So I'm starting to see a lot of merging of my vanilla and LS. So basically. I became a woman of a certain age and a certain maturity and everywhere I go, I don't feel the need to, to be so private about it. You know, um, my best friends, they know what's up. Um, some of my family members know what's up and, um, you know, I don't broadcast it to the world though. And, and that's by choice because one, my profession, <laughs> um, my businesses and anything that I put my hands on that needs a certain type of love, certain type of care and a certain type of privacy. So I know who to, you know, who to share that with. But for the most part, my closest people, they know. You know, I, I, it's crazy because I saw you and a karate kid in Miami and you South sure Beach. And, and, sure. it, and that was like a Silent Heat event, right? No, nope, actually, it was not. It was not a Silent Heat event, which is crazy uh, because we stumbled across that event. Like, we literally just needed a break from life and decided to go Miami and stumbled across an LS group from Atlanta out there. It's, so, it's, it's crazy because I, I will never do this again. I will never do this again. Before you saw me in Miami in South mm -hmm, Beach, mm -hmm. I was at Hedo. So okay. I went from Jamaica to Miami, and wow. I would never do that. To, I would never do that again because by the time I was in Miami, I was spent because I, I, I was I was fucking like a rabbit when I was at Hito. You know, what I'm saying? I, bet, so, I bet you were. <laughs> yeah. So by the time, but but it's crazy because you saw did you did you know Silent Heat before then? Silent Heat bred Miss Juicy. Okay, so you didn't know they was in Miami. Silent Heat was not in Miami at that time at all. Oh, I thought that was a Silent Heat event. That I no, that, that was were... that was somebody else's party. Somebody else that had nothing to do with Silent Heat. Silent Heat had no idea about that event that was out there. And I remember the guy's name, but I don't want to say it because I know him by his real name. So, you know, it's a dude that's based in Atlanta that was is throwing parties because he's still doing it now in Atlanta, but it had nothing to do with Silent Heat. And Silent Heat wasn't even in Georgia at that time. Silent Heat was still up in New York before they even, this was years before they even got out to um, Georgia. Yeah, that I, we I, saw each other in Miami. Yeah, it was crazy. You said, you know, you're trying to escape, you know, but but you 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 stumbled across an LS event. But that's and then, what I said. And then you stumbled across me at Wet Willie's. I was like, how this happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at Wet Willie's with my crew. So, right, yeah. So, that was crazy. So you you from Shaolin, right? Yes, born and raised. So for the slow motherfuckers out there, Shaolin is Staten Island, That's New York. Right. Listen, we might as well call Staten Island, New Jersey. Goddamn it, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all all the way in the in the ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, y'all like an island. And nobody yeah. don't want to claim us as the fifth borough anyway. So go ahead and attach us to Jersey. I live in Jersey right now, anyway. I, I remember you moved. Yeah, I left. I, I, I left. I, I remember you moved, mm -hmm. and um, that was like, that was like what, 2015, 2014? No, that was 2016. Three years ago. Three, three years, years ago. 2019. Uh, so I, I, I'm. It's crazy how I saw you in the lifestyle, but I didn't, I didn't put like me. People get offended when I don't remember them, because how my brain works. If I see you, you, you have, you need like a very distinctive look about you. Okay. You, it, needs to, it needs to be something about you that I have to remember, but even then I probably won't even remember your name. So I, I didn't put I didn't put two and two together until you know I, I saw certain pictures and you was a part of the Mac show. I was like, oh shit, that's how I don't even know all this time. So right. how did were you in the LS while you was doing the Mac show? 
I was. Yes, I was. And I was with somebody else. This was before I got with the Karate Kid. Uh, see, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Juicy was on this blog talk show called yeah. The Mac Show. That's yeah. the T H E Mac M A C show. And yeah. I, 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 I want to get a moment of silence because one of them passed away. The C of the Mac passed away. You know, would you like to give a name? Um, yes, Cool Shells. Cool Shells was um, like a little sister to me. And it's crazy how you mentioned about um, the meshing of your vanilla and your LS because I ended up... I'm, okay, so I do a lot. And Cool Shells, I knew in pushing her into different things because she was into radio too she was she was modeling i used to produce fashion shows so I, i've done a lot and i took her everywhere and everything that i was doing i was pulling her into i was event coordinating i did one of tracy brown's um book launches um so i took her everywhere and it just so happened i ended up taking my team to atlantic city and that's when i noticed that a couple of girls were acting a little funny and I was like let me find out and I found out okay that um they too were a little interested in dipping and dabbling in some things and um yes rest in peace to Shelly because she was young she was in her 30s and she passed of cancer to the brain which she suffered with for about I want to say about 16 years oh wow she and, 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 mm -hmm. Hmm? But but no, I'm, I'm, I'm mad at you though. We keep going, wow. but I, I'm 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 gonna tell you why I'm mad at you. Keep going. Yeah. I keep going. Oh okay. Yeah. So you know she was young and yeah she was like my little sister. She was like my little sister, but she was she was she had some talk. She had a talk with me about some things that she wanted to get into, and I'm 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 kind of like. You know, it, it's sad that she didn't get to experience that and I would have taken her under my wing and I probably would have brought her <laughs> into the lifestyle. <laughs> Listen, but, um, I, I, I'm mad at you because when I went on a Mac show, Jamaica was there. Okay. And Shell was there, but you were noticeably absent. I was hurt by that. I was like, what's up with, I'm not gonna say your name. But, but you know what's crazy? I, 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 was so, I was so into you that I saw mm -hmm. your name and this was before I knew you was in the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I used your name as a character in the book. You are not the only one that has done that. Yes, I, I like Nikita. Not if, I, may, I may do that again. I, I like Nikita. And I may, you're I the second person that told me that. What I have say? a friend that wrote a book. I have a friend that wrote a book in California and used my name in the book as well. Yeah, I, I may have to run that back. So how, how did you start the Mac group? The Mac, um, the Mac show? So basically... I, I, don't, I don't know what was going on in my life at that time, but I felt like there was just a lot of people who needed an outlet or a place to go and some form of therapy that they couldn't get talking to their peoples and talking to their family, which even exists to this day, that there are still groups of people and going through some things, like you mentioned the whole LS and you know what we talked about before, People don't have places to go where they can talk. Now it's starting to become a thing where our people are starting to reach out and talk to people. But then I decided we're going to have this platform where the things that you want to talk about get spoken about here with no judgment. So it was therapy in an unprofessional way. So we weren't licensed therapists in any way, but we spoke about things that people were scared to talk about at their dining room tables, scared to talk about with their friends, scared to talk about, you know, in, in group settings with their homeboys and homegirls and stuff like that. So that's basically what that was. And that's how it started. Did you ever talk to Jamaica about swinging? Um, I don't recall. I probably did. I probably did. We probably did. We probably did. We probably had a conversation in different forms because that's my girl. You that know, she right. she is right. definitely a part of that close knit, you know, circle that 
I don't feel that I need to hide anything from. Like I like to, I like to be able to go places and know that if I look at, especially a female, and that's what it really comes down to. If you look at a female in a certain way, that you're not going to be judged by your friends. Where it's like, what is she doing? Like my friends kind of know what it is when, if that is happening. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, she know Mac Lady A. She 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 knew about some things. And ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica is my ex. You know what I'm saying? What, what, so, so you knew it was me before the, when you saw me. Did you know I was in a lifestyle? I don't think you knew me, and in, in the in the midst of, of our relationship. But did you remember me by being her ex or by being at her fashion shows that you used to vendor at? I, okay. So, I didn't put two and two together initially, but it was one show where I was like, I know who that is. Right? Was it, was it the one at occasions? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I was just like, I know who that is. Oh, you talking to him? Like, you know, we had a conversation. I was like, oh, okay. But it was never, you know, nothing other than cool people's because that's how I looked at you. You mm, know, yeah, like, let, let, let me find out Juicy snitched on me. Oh, I did not yeah. snitch on yeah, you. He, he I, wasn't, I wasn't telling nobody's business. I ain't that type of person. I let you go ahead and, and tell what you needed to tell to Miss Mac Lady A. Oh, she, she already knew I was out there. You know exactly. She already knew I was a wild boy. She, she just didn't know the specifics. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. She just didn't know, know the specifics. Right. You, you didn't me? know the details. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if, if you ratted me out. Mm, no. Honey, I saw I saw your man cutting up in the East Lifestyle no. booth. Mm, honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Nope. I mm. didn't go into details with her. Because, of course, in my mind, I would probably think the same thing. But like I said, I, I don't think that I was extremely detailed with her in regards to what I did and who I was. Um, some of the topics on the show were based on lifestyle shit. Like, we didn't just... Some of the topics I would come off with would, wouldn't just be, okay, let's talk about this. It was, would you entertain, you know, the possibility of, you know, another person in your bed with your partner? Those didn't come from okay, this is what I want to talk about. Some of it was lifestyle related. Like I said, I was in a relationship at that time with somebody that I was in a lifestyle with too. I don't think I've ever been in a relationship with anybody except my son's father that wasn't in a lifestyle. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Juicy knows how to keep a man. You know, she, she can't be single <laughs> for long. But, but you know what's funny? Me and Jamaica, we went out to eat and make a long story short, uh -huh. it, it was this couple and that was like some some attraction that we were just talking, we was talking about hedonism too, mm -hmm. and it, it was a, like a little flirty, and I and I got the, I got the the impression that if I would have been like, yo, let's swap, they would have been mm -hmm. with the shits, right, you know right, right, but I, I kind of passed on it because I wasn't really attracted to his wife, but it was just a vanilla setting. We just went out to eat, we saw right. a couple, we just started shooting the shit, right, with right, them, right. and Hedo came up, and we just started talking about the shenanigans and if i wanted to say you know let, let's you know book a hotel room it would have been on a popping I bet. Know, so it, it just happens like that so when was your start in the ls in the lifestyle okay um okay so it's crazy we're talking about fashion and modeling there's another home girl of ours that we modeled with and um she was like, you want to go to this party? I'm like, yeah, all right, let's go. It's in Brooklyn. She was like, I'm just warning you. This is the kind of party it is. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go back then, did she have short hair? Like short blonde hair? Yes. I know who you talking about. I know who you talking about. And y'all used, used to go bowling together, right? At the pier? Yo, we used to do a lot together. We used to party hard together. I, I, I know who you talking I, I was going to holler at her, but she was too close to Jamaica. So I was like, nah, I'm not even going. I, mean, exactly. I know, I know, I know exactly. Cause y'all, I, I know your circle. I'm familiar yeah. with your circle. Anyway, keep going. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't she, wait, wait, wait. Don't she have a son? She got a kid now, right? She has a son now. Yes, she does. Uh, okay, okay. We talking about the same shit. I, you talk about the same person. She. Yeah. Um, so this had to be. I don't know. This this is definitely about 16 years ago. Um, has to be 16 years ago because I was with that guy for four years then by myself for at least four years, two to four years. Then this one, yeah, uh-huh, 16 years ago, um, springtime. And she was like, you wanna go to this party? I'm like, all right, let's go. And um, she was like, let's go to the liquor store. We go to the liquor store. Then we was drinking 99 bananas. We bring that to the party. That is exactly how I met Solomon. Wait, 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 you, you was drinking liquid crack? 
liquid crack. Yes, we was. We 99 was, bananas. Liquid yes, crack. Straight, that, that, that's straight, mad dog. Straight to the head. Mm-hmm. Listen, she, listen, listen, listen. Miss Juicy's about that life. <laughs> Drinking liquid straight. crack. So her first straight. wing party. That's first party. Straight. So, and um, that's how I met Hamrock, a.k.a. Silent Heat. He was at the party. It was him and his boy at the time. They had started Silent Heat together. Um, he was with another female at that time. And um, he basically was like, you can trust me because he can tell like, all right, she's a little bit anxious, you know. Cause I didn't want to move from the living room. My first event, and I was like, I'm curious, but I don't know. Like you, you just don't know as a single female. You just, you just gotta be safe. That's the only way that I can sum it up. You gotta be safe. So you know, I'm there with my girls because it was three of us, and I'm just like, I don't know you from nowhere. So like, I didn't want to trust it, but something told me let my guard down, and I did. And uh, he walked me into a room. They was getting it in i didn't want no parts of it he took me back to the living room and um a guy that will name nameless because people do know him in the lifestyle um he was there and he was sucking on my toes and i was like oh i, I might like this and then one thing led to another even though we didn't have any type of penetration they kept in contact with me wait 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 um, wait hold on, hold on for a minute listen ladies and gentlemen miss juicy they had called they don't call her Juicy for no reason because she has a bubble. You know what I'm saying? And if I would have sucked them toes, mm. we would have we would have got down, down, down. Mm. I would have to crack because that, that's too much ass. Matter of fact, you, you like a 50 inch, like 45? Uh, you, you know what's crazy? I don't even know. It's, 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 it's nice size. It's, it's very I plump. Don't, I don't even know. These days, first of all, I dropped 30 pounds recently. So I don't even know. I try to keep it there. Like I do my squats every day and stuff, but I don't even know what that is anymore i really it, don't it, it's crazy i think why i didn't remember you was because when i saw you in, in at occasions and mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen occasions is a place it's like a banquet hall in queens yes and south jamaica yeah and you had like a wholesome look it's like your look in the vanilla setting outside of the lifestyle Tell the in contrast to the lifestyle, it's like you go from a wholesome look to a sleazy look. So that's why I can't put two and two together. Tell the people, thank you, thank you. And you know why I say that? Because it's crazy because, you know, when I start to open up to my vanilla friends, they're like, you? What are you talking about? Leader of all things in the building, this, this, that, what? What are you doing over there? And I'm like, listen guys, I am literally day and night, literally day and night. So did, did you did you ever like when I first got into the LS, they used to throw parties at Penn Hotel, Pennsylvania Hotel across the street from Madison Square Garden, and you know what? It closed. They closed it down. But okay, I, I know you got some stories. I've been there. At Pennsylvania Hotel. I've been there. So what is because the New York scene is not what it used to be. The New York no. lifestyle scene is not what it used to be. It's like no, in shambles. All. It's not like. At it's like non-existent. So now people what, can't have nothing. Yeah. So yeah, they they don't. New York City's not having it. So no. how was so how was the scene back then? Because I came in 2011. Okay. I came like five years after you. So basically, I was going to house parties, but it only lasted for me for a few months because, like I said, I was moving with Silent Heat all the time and they was dragging me everywhere and it was just like all right miss juicy you're part of silent heat and i was like okay i'm a part of silent heat and then we were throwing parties we were renting a brownstone in brooklyn to throw parties on like a monthly basis okay so how did you build that trust because you're single and you meet some random dude a, a lot of you know like you said is when you're single a single woman at the lifestyle at the lifestyle party mm -hmm. you have your guards up but what was it about these people about silent me that that it made just, you say i could trust them they never tried it they weren't they, they weren't thirsty for the box they weren't pushy they weren't they weren't you know they weren't doing that which some people do and i was like yo these are these are my brothers these are my homies like and they got me i'm a female they're not gonna let nothing happen to me and that's what they showed me Hemrock and the other guy who will name nameless, and I know I can mention Hemrock's name on here, like had me 
you couldn't you couldn't there wasn't nothing that was gonna happen to me and and because they did that to me everybody every female including Pocahontas that came around us after that that's exactly what we gave off it was just like one when you when you know my professional background you're like she ain't she ain't trying to be known out there she ain't trying to put her business out there. She ain't trying to get the people to investigate her and put her business out there. So with that being said, that was a trust factor that a lot of people gravitated towards. They was like, she don't want to lose none of none of what she got going for herself. And then two, it was like, she got into it because of the trust that these two men showed her. They weren't on it. And that's what they showed my girls that I was able to bring into it after a while. And then after a while, it was a bunch of us going around with the guys at Silent Heat, throwing parties, mostly in Brooklyn, at this brownstone. Every once in a while, we used to go to a house in Long Island that we used to get. Um, she's gonna name nameless too. But, um, and maybe we rented a couple of houses in Queens a couple of times, but it was mostly Brooklyn. It was mostly Brooklyn. We went to Pennsylvania Hotel a number of times. We never threw a party out there, but we will always try our best to support other people's events. So we always went out, but it was all about that trust that he and his boy instilled in me that I passed on to females and was like, ain't nothing gonna happen to not one of us. And we made sure that the people that attended those parties understood that that's what we were about. So I, I feel hmm? safe. Did you say? especially the single females they want to feel safe coming out knowing that this is what it's about and that not, not just anybody gonna be grabbing touching trying to grope and try to be with you that there's no pressure to do anything and that's just what it was well when did you see the change in, in the new york scene when it when it when it went from it was kind of vibrant it was kind of it was communal you know, people probably had their bullshit, but it wasn't put on blast like now. It's like every time somebody have a, a dispute, they run a fake book. But back right. then, how did people handle their issues with each other? Oh no, you just you just had to work it out. Like uh, other group leaders, or you know, if there was something happening at their event, or with you at their event, or vice versa at one of a Silent Heat event, like. You spoke about it and hopefully that you can um, you could work it out. But one thing that used to exist that I remembered that we would make sure of. And I think I could mention Kitty and Under because Kitty and Under been in the game forever, too. Like you can have a party the same weekend Kitty and Under was having a party. Mm -hmm. You didn't step on the toes of another LS group that was throwing a party. And that's just what it was. And when you put your event together, it was all right. Make sure so and so ain't throwing a Halloween party. Make sure this one ain't doing. And I think it was just a level of respect that people had for each other and one another that they were willing to communicate to work things out and willing to communicate so that it didn't look like, oh, I'm gonna throw a better party on that same day, and I, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a cheaper party on that same day, or whatever it might be. You know, I think we just lost respect for the fact that we can all eat off of this, and people just got really greedy at the end of it and didn't respect each other. I remember back then it was the Yahoo chats and and the Yahoo groups, and I remember on the Kitty. I remember I, now the names I'm about to name. I didn't know them. I never met them yet. But it was okay. Honey Kitty. It was the Young Guns. Yes. It was it was La Crush. Yes. It was I, Mike Jones. Mike Jones and Mrs. Jones was mm -hmm. one of the first couples I met mm -hmm. in the lifestyle. Okay. It was them. I, I said La Crush, right? Uh, La Crush. She was throwing parties in Long Island, and those was pretty much the only people I knew yes. in, in New York. Okay. You know, so. When did you see the change? Like the change what it was? I don't, it was, I don't hmm. remember exactly what year, right? But I don't know if you were a part of BBM and BBM Messenger. Yeah, I, I was a part of I was a part of BBM. Yeah. <laughs> and ev that, that everybody was started their own little uh, groups where things were very X rated in these groups because now Listen, that, 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 wait, hold on. Them Blackberry Messenger groups used to fuck up my battery. Anyway, okay. keep going. And you and used to pull the battery out and restart, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it's so true, though, that, you know, Yahoo chat was the thing, and then that disappeared, and BBM chat was the thing, and, you know, like, it, it, it just social media or these techno technological things continue to change, and that's what it was. And I remember 
being a part of different BBM groups. And I'll be honest with you, that's how we recruited people in regards to events. That's how we recruited people in regards to being a part of um, the group because that's how Pocahontas became a silent heat babe. She, I met her through BBM and she was like, I'm about that life. I said, are you really? Let's see. And, um, and then we started rocking out and that, and that was basically how it started. So that's how we would pull people. I really think that once that happened and everybody could get into these groups where they were a little more explicit, a little more open to things. And I, honestly, I, like I said, I don't remember what year that was or what years that transitioning was happening. Then other people had access to other people and other people were throwing their own little jump offs and their own little, all right, all group nights. And a matter of fact, a lot of the females and males that I know that are presently active in the lifestyle right now, I probably met them off of BBM, honestly, before hey. I created an LS page on Facebook. Oh, when did you get with the Karate Kid? I got with him. Because I remember he, I don't know, y'all came to the gala in Philly as Kermit and Miss Piggy, and he, he won yes. for the best costume. I thought that was funny. Yeah, I still got I still got those pictures. It's crazy because I was just looking at that picture the other day. I bought out I bought out my cousin. Um, that was one of her first like LS events, big events. You got a big booty like you? Yes. <laughs> because cause, cause you're like, you don't want to give me none. It's like you spend. <laughs> I don't think we've ever just been in a in a place where it ever really happened. We always see each other in passing somewhere or somewhere where it ain't just lifestyle oriented. Now, we were supposed to set up a one-on-one, -on -one, but then you kept curving me. So you kept hurting my feelings. Yo. Okay. So now, you know, it's crazy that you say curving because I am one of those who I am so busy. And I, I think people really feel like I use that sometimes as an excuse to not do something, you know, but was I in a relationship at that time that that was happening? There could have been some dynamics that just didn't warrant a good hookup. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, that's, that's why I feel back. But when I noticed that you were not posting him again, that's when, you know, I kind of swooped in. But how, how did, speaking of which, how did you and the Karate Kid hook up? Okay, so. Because he, he was kind of popular. 20, he had his own, he yeah. had his own, po he had his own um, parties. He had a Super Bowl parties. He, he was that's how we met. Super Bowl parties in, in Brooklyn. We met at, at a party that he threw in Queens. And um, I'm known for leaving something behind everywhere I go. And not intentionally because I'm just, you know, that absent minded. And I ended up taking off my boots. Like I had on some heeled boots. And it was February 2014, probably. No, I lied, 2012. And, um, I left the boots there and it was in the closet and I had to get in contact with him and I, I didn't have his number. I want to say Pocahontas had his number and I was like, I need you to get in contact with him because my boots is in the closet in the house that, you know, he rented and she was like, all right, she did that. And you know what ends up happening when you have somebody's um, items? It's like, am I going to keep going through Pocahontas to get to him? Like, mm -hmm. you know, eventually she was like, I'm going to just put a text together so you can get your shit right like that. And she put a text together, hey, this is Juicy, Juicy, this is da-da-da-da. Um, I believe you got her boots, so just hook up with her to get the boots. And he came out to Staten Island and gave me my boots. And, you know, the conversation was really casual, really short. He met me at a gas station. And I was like, all right, so hope to see you. And really nothing happened for like a whole entire year. It was like random. You know how you text people and you're just like, hey, hope all is well, or happy new year merry christmas whatever the holidays were that's really what it was and then all of a sudden we went on a date um the following year and that's pretty much how it started the date was nice and you know that was it i i gotta apologize to pocahontas because like after our fling she fucked up my bed too you know what <gasps> she, she 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 ladies and gentlemen her friend pocahontas squirted and she like <laughs> left like a, a crater on my bed. You know what I'm saying? It, it was like a crater that I had to, you know, clean up. But anywho, <laughs> I, I felt bad. You know, I, I got to apologize to her because like, I think soon after she had a flat because I wanted her to be my date. And uh -huh. this was when Glorious and Jahari were together and they had an event in Jersey. And I she remember told, that. 
Yeah. And she told me that she had a flat. Mm -hmm. I think she was had a SUV. She had some uh, car. Yes, Dora the Explorer. Yes, and um, she was like, yeah, I got a flat. I could make it. And yeah. my younger self was like, why the fuck you telling me for? But now, oh, okay. since, since, I, since I'm a man, I'm like, you know what? I got you. Let me, what's your cash at? Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's low key why she didn't fuck with me. It could be other things as well. We just like grew apart. But right. if, if I knew now what I knew then, you know, or if I knew then what I know now, that, that's right. Yeah. If I knew then what I yeah, if I knew then what I knew now, I would have I would have gave for like a couple that's hundred to fix and, her. And tires. I don't even know if that's really what it was. But if you had a car, go pick her up. You know what I mean? Oh no, nah, listen, I'm Team Metro car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying Metro. I don't drive in New York City. It, got it, got it, parking, got it. Is, parking is crazy. You know what I saying? remember that though. We always got flats in that truck. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Nah, we used to go everywhere. To, we used to go everywhere. That truck took us to six streets uh, events. Okay. In, in Philly. Yes. So how did you hook up with Eddie Kingdom in Philly? Um, the gala, the second year of the gala. Eddie and Donna. And they they actually honored Silent Heat that year. Silent Heat got an award. Oh, okay. Well, so, so when did they move to Atlanta? And th do you go to party? Do you party with them in Atlanta? I'm always in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm like always in ATL. Um, they moved eight years ago. Eight years ago, they moved out there. Um, they just, you know, wanted a better life for themselves and... Um, that was a good move because, you know, like you said, it wasn't nothing popping in New York in regards to the lifestyle. And Hamrock is very much a lifestyle person, meaning this is how he lives his life. His his, his circle is lifestyle, you know, and um, he moved out there uh, for a couple of years. They um, waited and waited, waited as they built their house. And then and then there goes the Silent Heat Manor because we used to call. We used to um, we used to throw parties, <laughs> private parties at um their spot when they lived in Brooklyn too. We used to throw parties there all the time. I'm pretty sure tons of people remember those parties. And those parties was like free to get into. You wasn't paying. You just bring a bottle. We was cooking. Um and we was cooking breakfast. You would wake up in the morning, we was making breakfast. So it was it was it was just what it was. This is the life that we lived. And when they moved to Atlanta and then they built their house, that's exactly what we continued. Um and I would fly out to Atlanta Right before the pandemic, at least three to four times a year. I so, and, and, and not to cut you off, but them plane tickets to Atlanta, I don't know what airline you fly, but Southwest, they're dirt cheap. They're dirt <laughs> yeah. cheap. Mm -hmm. No, I always made sure my tickets were cheap. I mean, even before I was flying out there, I would, we would. We would, I was literally getting on the Greyhound bus because I mean, I've always had a car, but I don't do that. I, I used to get on the bus for 16 hours to go to Atlanta. I did it at least twice. Wow. I did it at least. I, I, I was, I'm loyal to Silent Heat. Wait, you know? wait, 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 hold on for a minute. We, we too bougie to say cheap. We, we say inexpensive. Yeah, that's the right. That's the right. How you, how you do 16? Do, do, did dudes ever try to holler at you doing them excursions? It was overnight. I would be asleep on the bus. <laughs> no, see, you, see, if I would have saw you on the bus, you would have got finger pop. Ow. I would, I would, I wasn't remembering nothing. I wasn't remembering nothing because I would be asleep. I would literally get on the bus. Literally, it would be overnight majority of the time. It was never. I never did something during the day, so I would be getting to um, Georgia at least no later than one o'clock the next afternoon. And um, Hamrock would pick me up from the bus and everything, and you know whatever the event was for the weekend. It would be what it was, and we would have a great time, and then I would be back in New York. Like I said, right before the pandemic, we must have hosted at least four parties in 2019 before the shutdown. So you never had the urge to, like, go to Magic City after you got off the bus? Because the Magic City Strip Club is across from the Greyhound. So you didn't no. get the urge to say, oh, I, I want to no. try out. Because you got the body for it. I don't know how you look now, but back yeah. then you had uh, that Paducah don't, you know? And, I, I still and, and, and got you know it. What, I still got it. Huh? I still got it. I just got on, you know, my educator's outfit today, but I still got it. <laughs> you didn't wear lingerie for this, for this, for this you know occasion? Why? Baby, you needed to prepare me for this. You know why? You're right. You need to prepare me for this. I could have, I could have put on a whole juicy outfit. You could have, you could strip right now, you know what I'm saying? I, I, but it wouldn't look as seductive. I got a whole little wife beater underneath listen, here. Listen, listen, I, I love a little thug in a woman, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love a little thug in <laughs> a woman. 
And you know what? I wasn't. I definitely wasn't prepared. You're not gonna catch me off guard next time. No, no. So, <laughs> did, did, did you ever go to trapeze and the loft in Atlanta, the swing clubs? Yes, I have. Yes, I so, have. I've I've never been to the loft. I've heard about the loft so many times, but I've been to trapeze, and there's other places that I've been to. Okay, so what happened with you and the Karate Kid? Because I remember the last time I saw y'all, it was at a BEBN meet and greet in Harlem at Amsterdam Lounge. Yeah. Shout out to Preach because that meet and greet was live. And then and then y'all went to I think y'all went to Yonkers at the Playhouse before it got before it like had some fire. Well, well you was there right the night yes. before. Yes. Yes. So so tell people about the Playhouse and. The day after, it got like an electrical fire and the whole house burned down. I don't know about what happened the next day because we left the night. Like it was, there was at least eight of us that came to the party. We went to the meet and greet. And that was the after party. And then we went to the after party in Yonkers. We we were all there, but we didn't stay into the wee hours in the morning. So I'm not sure what happened, but um, that was a very nice party. Um, I think that, um, I don't think that's definitely not the first time I'm, I met the bunny. Um, but that was, that was a nice party. I liked that. I liked that party, but we did, we didn't stay. We didn't stay. There, what people don't realize was, um, there was an altercation that took place that night that, um, kind of led to a, a very public apology from the karate kid the next day on facebook if people remember it and um that was our first party in the scene like with everybody that was our first party and we brought a female with us and um i think that there were a lot of check boxes that we were supposed to tick off before we went to that party and we did it and um, so that led to a bit of miscommunication and a disagreement that spilled into and in front of everybody that night, if anybody remembers. And like I said, it led to a public apology on Facebook the next day from him. And it just from that point on, because I think that that was one of my last parties for a while that I had to regroup because now it's okay everybody's different when they get into a relationship just because the previous relationship these were the things that y'all did didn't do had you know your check boxes then don't look the same when you get into a new relationship and you know we didn't do that so we had to sit down and really do that while there were other things that were going on with each of us personally and in our life in, in regards to family in regards to work we needed to figure out how to make that work for us in order for us to have our fun. And we just never figured it out. Oh, cause I, I take that back. The last time I saw y'all was, I believe in 2015 when Gloria's, it was in Brooklyn at the Masonic temple. It looked oh like a basement. Oh my God. And, and, Yo, where you be bringing Kitty, back some memories. It was on, it was on and Kitty was there and Gunner was there. I, I left because I, See, I, I got to I gotta make another apology because I left my date. You know, so I had a headache and I went I went back to, you know, Queens because okay. that was in East New York and I hopped the J train and went back to Queens. But I know, you know, Diamond was there and, and Gunner was there. So that was the last time I saw you with the Karate Kid. You yes, know. it was actually. And I, I don't only think that we were there briefly, too. I don't I don't recall staying. I don't recall staying at that event either. I think and it was, what, we were there briefly. And, but you, 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 the, the, when I, when I first had a crush on you, it, it was, it was in, um, the jungle, ha, no. um, half gifted and Jonesy's group. And you, okay. and you and, you and, you and the karate kid, y'all had a threesome with the tall skinny chick, with the tall skinny chick, with the tall skinny chick and the jacuzzi or something like that. And y'all posted the pictures. Oh, you know what I'm yeah. Okay. So, so you was like the star in that group, and your page <laughs> keeps getting shut down. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 I was, you, 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 then Lucy. You was like yes. Lucy. 
Yes, Lucy, Juicy, Lucy, Juicy, or something like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, your, your page kept getting shut down because you know it was a lot too much ass. They couldn't take the assets. Yes, you the the, the the photos were a bit too much. Yep, I, I kept them into Facebook jail. Well, that was that was when like that's that's when Facebook was kind of like the wild wild west. Yeah, you could get away with certain things even though you could still go to Facebook. People would have to report you. Yes. It's not like now it's automatic. Like they can right, right, drag right. shit. But back right. then it was like the wild wild west and people would have to report you. Yeah. And you you was always getting reported because yep. it, was, it was too much ass. Yeah. So but but going but going back to that scene in y'all, because you think that was the first kink in the armor of your relationship? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but okay, so how, how would you know hindsight is 2020? So, you know, I would think that you will have more wisdom now, you know, as I you get do. older, you get more mature. So how would you, how would you would have replay your relationship? Because people, I'm a firm believer that relationships shouldn't have ups and downs. Like the only roller coaster I want to ride on is the one at Six Flags. You know what right. I mean? But thinking back, what would you change? Like, what would you tell couples who may have a miscommunication or even new couples? You, you definitely have to go over that checklist prior to even stepping out into the world or inviting anybody else into your space. If you don't have that checklist of do's, don'ts, likes, uh, where we meet halfway at and stuff like that, it's not, it's just not going to work. And besides that checklist, what is going on outside of your person, inside your personal life with your kids, your family, your job, because that was a big issue. Like at that very moment, I had a lot going on with me, with the different things that I was involved in. And he did too. Like he wasn't just working, he was trying to fight. So like that schedule in itself was hectic. How can you be there for your kids? Cause he had kids. How can you be there for them? Be there to show up for work, be there to show up for training, be there to show up for a fight be there to show up for this new relationship with all these things that we need to kind of see eye to eye on and perform at a LS event in a respectful manner that doesn't kind of put your relationship on blast or, or, you know, bring disrespect to your friends and your people around you. Like we did, we just didn't juggle it. We just didn't know how to juggle it. It was almost like, we jumped into it and was like, we just gonna have fun. Like this is this is a go. Like let's do this. The picture of the girl that you're talking about with the the, the in the tub or the jacuzzi or whatever, shorty should have been vetted a little better because oh she's you know, a bug out. Like she's a bug out, yo. Anyway, keep going. I don't know which girl you're talking about, but if you're talking about the girl that I'm talking about, where we had this one, this this maybe this is a whole nother girl where it was a private thing that we did. But this one particular girl, we didn't vet enough, right? And um, yeah, y'all, y'all having threesomes galore that you don't remember the chicks y'all having threesomes with. Anyway, keep going. This one particular female, she ended up friending an ex of mine and slept with my ex. And I felt like you can't be a part of this situation with me and my current if you are going to allow my ex to clutch you. And the craziest part about it is my ex... It was all calculated. Like he was like, "Look, I'm in her inbox." Like he was showing me. Me and my ex, are, I don't have that ex that I'm not a friend friend to. Let's just put it like that. So he was he he would communicate with me like, "You know this girl?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And since he knew what I was about, he was like, "Oh, she she get down for the get down." And I'm like, "She might. I don't know. I would hope she's not because she's dealing with me in this situation right now, right?" But she did. And right after he smashed, she called me like, "It's a done deal." I'm like, "All right, thanks." And, and we cut her off because I just felt like, you know, if you could get that from him, go ahead, get it from him. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, we just didn't do enough personally, one-on-one on likes and dislikes and stuff like that. And we just didn't juggle life. Listen, I, I'm, I'm glad you said that because, because after me and Jamaica broke up, I got into a, a chick who was already in a relationship and it was it was just it was like my relationship with Shorty. I'm gonna call her. I'm gonna call her Boston. Okay. So me and all my relationship with me and Boston kind of mirrored your relationship with the Karate Kid because it was like we just jumped in it. It was like we're gonna freestyle this shit. Yeah. And it, it was like 
it was like you know the difference between jumping into the lifestyle as a couple instead of falling back and getting to know each other get to know each other nuances and proclivities and do's and don'ts and likes and dislikes and seeing if he could be around this person it's like freestyling the song mm -hmm. and having a structure you know you have verses you have a bridge you have a chorus you have a concept you know right. it's it's structured but if right. you're just freestyling it it's not going to be a hit song because, right if you take your time to put yeah. all those elements and those pieces together you have such a lovely melody and that's what we didn't have we didn't do that we were we were literally we freestyled it did you like it or you didn't like it all right if i'm coming with the next bar am i gonna do a little bit of work and that's what we try but you already saw a little bit of what we can do so i don't know if you're gonna respect what we could do and we just couldn't we couldn't as a couple we we could not figure out that balance of home career and the lifestyle we we couldn't figure it out and every time we would step into it we were like all right the water's still hot let's go back over here and that's yeah. what kept happening like i'd be like oh wow like okay and it would literally it wouldn't even be more me or him it would literally be equal like i bet i'm not ready i'm not ready we not ready oh nah 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 what's up you you uh, no all right bet let's go and and that's what happened and you know i don't i don't look at it as anything other than a learning lesson like i literally checked off everything that i know i need to do going forward if i ever decide to pursue anything like that again you know i um i i definitely want to take my time with it and, and, and what I what I like what I like about you is that you didn't throw him under the bus. You didn't get on Never your that. Mary J. Blast shit. You didn't go on your has has no fury like a woman scoring shit. Never and, that. You know what I'm saying? It, you kept everything in the house, and he didn't say like he's quiet. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So that, that's what I like about you because you didn't have like this back signal, and you didn't put on the show because a lot of couples are nutty. They will shit on each other and then get back together. They shit on no. each other. It's, it's like everything is not for Facebook. No. Home shouldn't be on the street. No. Nope. You feel me? Like the minute you, if I have an issue with you, the minute that you put our issue on blast, when we could have talked about it behind closed doors, I am not fucking with you. That's because right. you'll do you'll do anything for attention. You selling right. your soul and you selling out our privacy, our sacred. Like our relationship's supposed to be sacred. Right. You feel me? So I, I'm 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 not gonna fuck with you. However, that was a little bit of controversy. Yeah. With you and the karate kids beginnings with Genesis. Yeah. And with Snow White. Yeah. He was with Snow White. And what's funny is I'm cool with Snow White. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people was like, yo, Karate Kid upgraded. They were shitting on her. Oh. They said he upgraded with you. Oh, so I, yeah. thought, I thought that was funny. It, it, and then she used to throw subliminals, subliminals. And I think that's why Pocahontas stopped fucking with the lifestyle too. Because that's I think that's the last time I saw her on her page. Because after Snow White was throwing subs, Snow White deactivated her page. I'm not Snow White. Pocahontas deactivated her page from Snow White was throwing subliminals at your relationship with the Karate Kid because she was salty that the Karate Kid had left her for you. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Snow White. So how did you how did you deal with the, that shenanigans? Well, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, and and that's why you know when you said you know throwing subs, I'm like oh no, and people felt like it was an upgrade. It was it was irrelevant. To this relationship we didn't have to talk about it there was there was nothing to speak on i don't have any reason to speak on anything that happened prior to what we had going on Be especially if he's not talking about it and he really didn't so there wasn't there wasn't much to talk about there wasn't much to talk about mm. there wasn't so, so what was the straw that broke the camel's back in your relationship you don't have to get specific, but okay. what was it like, you know, okay, this is not for us. We better off as friends because this relationship is not working. So, so it's basically- It's like vodka and milk. Right. So, you know, we, we mentioned one of the things that's happening in the world today is all these mental health issues. And mental health is real and people need to realize it, right? Um, I think talking about juggling everything that we had going on in life it took a toll on our situation and 
you cannot be good for me if you're not good for yourself. Like, I got to make sure I'm healthy. I got to make sure, you know, I'm good, that I'm functioning in order to, well, one, I'm a mother. So I needed to be able to care for my son. And that's basically the end all of it. He and I just got to a point where mentally, neither one of us was in a place to care for either one of each other. Like, we both needed to work on self in order to be good for each other. And maybe I moved into a better place faster than he did, or, you know, I got to a, a place of healing faster than he did because there was a lot of things that went on in our relationship that caused a lot of trauma and stuff like that. But while I was progressing and growing, he was still in this place where he wasn't ready to deal with the things that he needed to deal with to fix and better himself. And I was there to support him through the way and I want nothing but the best for him. And I was willing to be there through it all. And he just, I just feel like I just was moving way ahead of his plan. And not that I couldn't wait on him, but one thing that I wasn't going to do was pull me down in the process because, again, I had to function for me because there's people that rely on me. You know, my kid relies on me. My job relies on me and whatever other businesses that I'm dealing with. And I can't, especially one of the biggest things that's near and dear to my heart that most people don't know about me is that I run a youth football program in Staten Island. And you're talking about a hundred and something kids and 30 something staff, and I'm not going to fail them because mm -hmm. like that's, that's important to my community, you know? So I had to function for them. And, um, you know, I, I involved my son in every step of the healing process that we were going through. So I was very transparent in what was happening in my relationship and how we was trying to fix it because my son was a teenager. My son is 22 now. And um, it just it just never worked. I was, like I said, I was two steps ahead because the work that I wanted to do, I was doing it. I, I even went and got help I, I even saw a therapist and everything and was hoping to 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 get him on board and it just would never happen so see see i i could have been your kleenex Al, you know what I'm you could have <laughs> came to my crib I, listen i, I would have been dr love you know dr really? Dr. thank you know you. What I'm saying? you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now i know yeah now you know so i remember the last time i saw you two together was at his fight party at york college in queens and i'm mad because Jahari, it was, I still got that picture, me, you, and Jahari. Yeah. And she wanted some liquor. So, you know, I, I live, I live not, not too, too far. far. Yeah. Right. So I, I hopped to E, got mm -hmm. the liquor, came back. And when I came back, the fight was fucking over. <laughs> I'm like, ain't just a bitch. I wasted that money. And <laughs> I, I'm pissed to this day. So, so how's like life after that relationship? Life after that relationship. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go to that, was was dudes in your inbox? Was they still violating? Because I I got love for Karate Kid, so that's why I didn't push up on you. And plus, regardless of me, we, even if I don't know you, I'm not the type of dude who's gonna fuck with you when you're in a relationship because there's too many right. women out there. And plus, right. that's like penitentiaries and prisons are filled with dudes who fought and got killed over women. So were dudes in your inbox, even though that they knew you was in a relationship? Um, I think for the most part. And, and dudes people, who knew him. Because I, there's no there's no honor amongst thieves. So how was your inbox back then? I don't recall anybody ever overstepping their boundaries with him and I had to have a conversation about, you know, anybody. I think for the most part, um, even in in my vanilla world, people were just like, I'm not fucking with that dude. He's going to kick me. Like, you know, so <laughs> people did not really do it. Honestly, I don't recall ever having a situation where I felt like, yo, he's doing too much. Now, we entertained people's inboxes too. So, you know, majority of the time, if there was a message of any sort, like it, it, it was mutual, like, oh, okay, what you think? Or, you know, or they know that you're in a relationship. Hey, do you guys entertain, you know, other couples and stuff? So we would have that. But other than that, I can't really say that there was anybody who really pressed it. No. Yeah, because those hands are dangerous. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You ain't, you ain't gonna fuck with him. <laughs> 
Yeah, but nobody, so, nobody did it really. So how was it like after that relationship? So after our situation, but because you got no, you got no more in-house dick. So so now you <laughs> now you working now you're not working on the salary no more. You working on commission. Okay, so basically that's my longest relationship ever in life. I've never been with anybody as long as I was with him, and um, you know that was basically eight years of you know love and and then there were years that we just tried to make it work there were ups and downs and in and out so basically um like i said i did i did end up going to therapy within our relationship and coming out well not really out of it because by that time i had already been four years in of therapy five years actually um and i um i just decided that what i took from therapy was one I need to not be um, the type of person that doesn't like like I can't I can't be there's a there's a word for it and I use this word all the time because now I think I'm a therapist and I'm I tell everybody um, enabling that's the word mm-hmm. I can't be enabling one of the biggest things I took from therapy was that I was an enabler and it was the first thing that I learned as well. Um, when you're in a relationship, yes, there is communication where there are things that you'll do as a man and I'll do as a woman and things that we communicate that we might need from each other that we want our partners to do. But when you force it upon your partner to be that person, that's when you become an enabler. So, you know, there was something that was going on and I kept doing it and not because he wanted me to do it. But because I felt like that's what he needed. And I learned in therapy, like, well, if you're doing that, something as simple as who's who's cooking breakfast for you every morning when he's off to work, right? Something as simple as that. And I'd be like myself. So why do you wake up every day and cook him breakfast? He didn't even ask for it. And I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm using that as an example. And then he became dependent on breakfast. So the one day you don't cook breakfast, then it's like, well, where the hell is breakfast? <laughs> So I had to learn how to be, how to not be enabling and use, you know, my words to to compromise with a partner, which I haven't tried yet, to figure to to know like, okay, is this is this what we want in a relationship? Do you do you prefer that I make breakfast, or is it is it expected that I make breakfast? Do you want me to make breakfast? Like that's those are things that couples don't do, you know, where as simple as a woman getting up every day and cooking, she thinks that's because she just got to do it and it's expected, but did y'all ever communicate that in the beginning of the relationship you know so i became i was an enabler and it was something that i continued to do that was never asked of me and i just did because i felt like but if i don't do it then well he never asked y'all never spoke about it right um so i learned that i learned that you cannot be in a relationship with somebody and you don't set your boundaries as to what you'll ex- accept. If, and I'm gonna use something as simple as sex. If you don't like to be tickled with a feather, make sure your partner knows that. Because for some people that might be a triggering thing. I don't like feathers cause I don't like big bird. I don't know. Like it's just as simple as that, you know? And I want to be able to apply that. And I want to also apply that just because it's understood it, just because it's understood doesn't mean it's said meaning i i know you love me but sometimes something people need to hear it mm-hmm. i don't i don't want to have to assume that you love me because you're here sometimes some people need to hear it or you need to use love language to show that you love them Showing up every day doesn't mean that you love me. That could just mean it's convenient. You're comfortable with what this is. Your life is this every day and you just show up to it. I'm at that point where even in my job, I loved what I've done all these years that I've done it, but I'm, I don't need to tell everybody that anymore because it's getting to a point where, man, I can't wait to retire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I haven't been in a relationship since him because honestly, the relationship only really ended, um, I like to say, July of 2021, because when you're in a relationship with somebody, there is a complete closure. And wow, that's recent. I thought yeah. y'all broke up way before then. Nope. 
And, <laughs> some people, and some people don't know how to do a complete closure. And that means we were living together. How can I know that you still have cheese to come back to the house and you know you have your things in the house like to me that's not the end because if you could show up at the drop of a dime and you're not calling to say you on your way somewhere in there that means that there's a level of respect that we still have for each other you know and once that door fully closed and it was like all right we're moving on locks changed and all of that that's when i knew fully that that was us ending you know and 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 we came to a mutual agreement going forward i've been single and i just i don't assume anything i speak how i feel i create my boundaries if there's something that i don't like i say it i'm very careful in how i say it i will say to you you know i didn't like when you said this it made me feel this way especially because perception is a motherfucker just because you see yellow that doesn't mean that i see yellow i might be seeing white like that whole dress thing on facebook and the shoe thing and all that where somebody saw green and the other person saw black or the pictures with the old lady and the young lady with the hat and the little feather like i saw the old lady you saw the young lady it's perception that doesn't mean you're wrong and that doesn't mean i'm right you know and vice versa so now i just go into things just with a very open mind about how i'm going to respond to things i definitely listen more when people are speaking to me i try my best to give them my undivided attention not have other things you know around when i'm in the process of you know speaking to a new guy or whatever i just i'm very attentive because like i said there was work that i needed to do too this wasn't all he fucked up or no like i didn't i wasn't a perfect person in this situation there were things that i needed to do as a woman to be a better person with him and i just wasn't there like i said we jumped in it so what do your son think about your your breakup oh uh, you know what's crazy about that we just had a conversation about that um over the holiday break because he came home for school he came um for um the it's holiday crazy. break I feel I feel old you, like as you can see I got gray in my beard you did not see that before you know what I'm saying <laughs> no, but, but I remember I, I remember when he was little yeah you know what I'm saying no. he was like 10 he was like what 10 or 9 something like that I remember when he was little so yeah, what he's do you a grown ass man now yeah mm -hmm. time is flying time is on crack but yeah I know right no it is right <laughs> my son like I said, he was a part of the healing. He was I was very transparent with him about what we were going through, what we were dealing with. Um and I was transparent because I didn't want my kid to be the type of kid that felt like this is going on with him himself and he can't talk to me or he can't talk to somebody else because he knows what I'm going through or what, you know, he was going through. So so what we was going through it we went through it together as a family and there were times that I had to call on my son to be there for me my son some nights would just lay there with me and you know would just be in my company because at times you know the mind does things that won't allow you to have peace won't allow you to have rest so just the company of my kid just watching a movie or whatever we would do or go out to dinner or whatever kind of got me through the process of you know separating and um he um he asked me the other day he asked me he was were you upset when you guys broke up cuz my son was here for the breakup and um more or less because i know my mother is done and i could see that she no longer even wants to try so he had to be present to kind of and not had to be he 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 was here at the house it was a, another break that this breakup happened my son was present because he was home from school and um he he stepped in and and i let him step in and like i said it nothing violent was about to happen but the argument was just too much for him and it was just like but i hear it in your voice you didn't sound like you were you didn't sound angry you just sound like you were done and i was like i was 
I, I, I don't I, I don't I don't think the karate kid I don't think he would have popped off. Like I don't know what's going on in your relationship, but he doesn't strike me as the type of person who would be on some Ike Turner shit. You know what I'm saying? He's he's not he's not the type of person who would harm me, but when you know what he's capable of and you're not confident in what's going on with you guys at the moment, you just in your head you, you might form some things, you, you know? Nip, you got to nip it in the bud before it gets worse, before it gets to that point. Exactly, know? exactly. And, and and that's why I'm saying, you know, my son, in his mind, he was like, I'll, I'll take care of it, don't worry. And it was something really minor. And oh, wait, 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 wait. That's, wait, wait. I, I got to shout out your son. I got to shout out your son because your son is not a bitch. So I... I <laughs> wait, what you, what you need to know is that my son is his same height but because my son is a football player he's about two something so he comes out this way so him and they were the same height but my son was broader so you know at the end of the day again i don't think like it was never gonna be an altercation i know that for a fact it wasn't gonna be an altercation it's just that when you hear that in your mother's voice like she doesn't even want to be bothered like like that's what he heard because like i said we just recently had that conversation one-on-one -on -one a couple of weeks ago mom when you when y'all broke up were you were you uh, were you hurt were you were you devastated and you know i was like son i was i was done he was like i could tell and my son and I, we have that relationship where we are very transparent about conversations because he's in the process of dating someone right now. And my son never had a relationship. He never had a girlfriend. He's 22 and he never had a girlfriend. And one of the reasons why he never had a girlfriend is because I never, I never made it a prior. I, I don't, I don't joke around with my kid. Like I look at my son and I'm like, okay, we have, we have done certain things that other black and brown boys can't do. And and I need you to, to keep that momentum going. I invested in it. I pushed it. I was your cheerleader. Don't crack now that you're an adult and in college and on your own. I'm still that same cheerleader right behind you rooting for you. Keep going. Keep pushing because, you know, you're not going to be a statistic. And I need you to be who you are, because, especially for the football program that I run, because my son is a product of that program. And when the kids look at my son, they know that it works. So they look up to him and I'm like, we're not gonna break now. I gotta see this to the end because I stuck around for this program because I believe that our brown and black boys all have the potential and what it takes to get to where you're at because I'm instilling the same things in them and I'm showing them the same things and providing the same things for them that I did for you, you know? so. My kid coming to me and talking to me about my relationship very open because that's kind of also what we provide for the players in the football team and the cheerleaders. Like, this is a family. We're going to be here for y'all. We're always going to be here for y'all. Y'all could talk, talk to us about anything. And that's just what it was for my son. My son, you know, has no animosity towards him. He doesn't dislike him. Um, my son actually is one of the reasons why we lasted that long because when it was on the verge of falling apart, my son said to me, be there for him. And like I said, he was a teenager in high school. He was like, be there for him because that's what our community doesn't do. Our women, our black women, they run instead of being supportive of our black men. And because of brainwashing, they were trained to do that, but you stayed. No matter what the outcome was for you, you stayed. When we broke up, it was because he no longer wished to, to work the way I was working with my boundaries. He just didn't want to work, work that way. And I respected that. My boundaries were put there for me to be safe and not to make him feel less of a person or anything like that. And my son, when he said to me at the age of 17, be there for him. That's what I said I was going to do because I didn't want for my son to be 10 years later in a situation like mine and every woman that he needed to be in his corner ran, left, fled, you know? So my son was very supportive of this situation all the way through from beginning, middle end, ups, downs. He was there for it all, supported it all the way and says to me, 
the reason why he waited this long to get into a relationship with somebody is because he wanted to make sure that he was at his best as a person to get somebody else. Shit, I, I would have been different. I would like, leave that nigga. Like, leave that motherfucker. <laughs> like, leave, fuck him. Like, I would have been that, different. Like, that's definitely not my kid. My kid <laughs> is... Like, fuck um, that motherfucker. Like, leave his ass. Like, you get something. You, so other people would have said it because other people did. Other people was like, yo, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, guys, I'm safe. As long as I'm safe within it, I want to support him. I want to be there for him. And I got to work on me at the same time. Maybe he could do some work on him at the same time. And maybe we could come back better and stronger together. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. Because at the end of the day, isn't that all relationships? And the, the more you endure those ups and downs, to me, that's like you, that's how you build your foundation and that's how you get stronger and stronger. Like hopping and jumping ship to the next person. You're about to get the same drama with somebody else, but in a different, you know, on a different scale and a different magnitude. If you're gonna deal with drama, deal with the drama that you're comfortable with. And, you know, he's an amazing person. I will never discredit him. He is, he is one of the nicest guys you will ever meet in your whole entire life um i wish that the things that he had going on with him that he will address them and 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 see to being a better person because i always said to him when you're bad you're bad but when you're good you are amazing and it is what it is he he he's great he is he's, he's a great guy okay so you still in the ls right Listen, I'm trying to I'm trying to get to Missy's party. This MLK was rescheduled from January. I'm trying to come. Oh, I'm oh, trying. I, 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 listen, so what do you think about I, I interviewed Missy. So what okay. do you think about Missy Ascension and the lifestyle? Listen, everybody it seems got... seem like she's the only person from New York who's holding the torch. Right. Even though she throws everybody, her parties in Jersey. Keep going. Everybody's gotta get in where they fit in, and everybody, I'm glad you mentioned the torch got to carry the torch and this is just where we're at right now you know what i'm saying and missy has a certain level of confidence and comfortability that some of us old heads just don't have you know what i'm saying and i'm not an old head i'm a middle i'm a middle i'm in between i'm not i'm just in between but she has that so if she has what it takes to go ahead and carry that torch and sh and carry it in a confident and and you know execute then go ahead you know what i'm saying it might it be something a little different than what we used to do back in the days but that's life in general facebook didn't exist back in the days we have myspace that's all that happens we that, have that's, to that's how i found out myspace is how i found out about the lifestyle keep going you got to keep innovating and renovating and you we can't we can't who's on myspace ain't nobody in my space if we stay over there we ain't gonna communicate with nobody so you know if if this is what it is then this is what it is I don't take away from what she's doing. Like I said, I was I'm I'm trying to get to the party. I'm trying to get to the party. And I might I might be me in 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 that realm, meaning I'm still gonna be Miss Juicy. Miss Juicy likes to have, you know, a a, a group of friends with her that kinda we 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 march to the beat of our own drum within a party with a whole different music. It is what it is, and we mean no malice behind it because we're coming to support regardless. You know, we're coming to support. We we want to be around that. And I have two rooms booked for that right now. And and I tried to sell the room the last time and somebody did ended up taking one of the rooms and only because at that moment we was at the peak of this um, uh, Omarion, okay? Yeah, Omarion. <laughs> All right, we, we, this Omicron came in and we were at the peak and, and don't get me wrong, like I too was a little like, oh shit, am I really gonna go to this party? Because I was kind of like, should I, shouldn't I? But you know, with the hotel no refund policy, I was like, I'm not losing out. I got two rooms, I am not losing out. So like I said, somebody did take the room and I was coming with some people and um, I hope that we can be able to attend um, in March. I hope I can still fill the room. I, I hope people are still interested. I hope the Omicron virus is not making people anxious and worried about whether they should attend or not, because that's why everybody had dropped out on me and I was selling the room. But I'm coming. I um, as of right now, because of an investment that I have coming up in 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 a year. I've been trying to lay low with traveling to Georgia 
for parties or anywhere right now for parties. Um, I just, I need to build what I'm building right now. But in the meantime, my group of friends, like I said, my circle know what it is when, and like I said, you have access to my vanilla page. When you see me out with all those people, like that's my, that's, that's my LS crew. That's my crew. We, we, we eat dinner on the weekends. We go out, we, we, we about to celebrate another one of our birthdays next weekend, you know? So we still hang out, you know? It's just that it's so intimate. It's just, it, it is what it is right now, you know? And, and that's it. But I look forward to, to attending anybody's uh, event as long as it's cost efficient. Because like I said, I have an investment coming up and I need to, I need to see that to the end. Yeah, because Missy get a lot of hate. So to see like OGs like you, you know, like veterans, like you show her love, that's something because Missy gets a lot of hate. But um, I can imagine, but that's that's what this life is. You know, you're not going to get hated on unless you're doing something that somebody else is wishing they were doing up that scale. And like I said, I just feel like all, all people need to re respect the process and, and what this is in life. I, who, who's going to take the torch? Who else is going to take the torch? Right. Who, who else is going to throw parties? Who else is going to do it? If nobody else is doing it, then let her be. You know what I'm saying? And and go into it the way you would anything else. If you still want to be a part of the lifestyle and you want to attend an event, ain't nobody saying you got to go there and be, you know, the life of the party or try to be the life of the party. Maybe you just need to sit down in your little corner right there and just en enjoy the scenery. Sometimes that's what you have to do. So what's your favorite position before we leave out of here? Like what, what's, what, what tickles your fancy? I'm asking for myself. Well, let's I, 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 listen, listen. It's been such a long, it's been such a long time. I don't even know. Wait, wait. What, what, what last time? When last time you had sex? I'm being nosy. <laughs> wait. First of all, uh, first of all, do, do you like all three holes played with? No, I don't. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Red flag. Flag on the play. Yeah. So with an ass flag on the play. So you don't want the North Star play with, you just want the South Star play with. It's it's unfortunate. Um, you know, there was a time that I was open to I was open to it all, but you know, what people gotta also realize is that, you know, your body changes, you know, you go through these physical changes too, and 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 what you used to do, what I used to do, I, oh, okay. I okay, what you used to do. Tell me, what did you used to do? Well, I wish Hemrock was honest with us. Um, yo, there would be nights where it it would be what it is. It's like, all right, next, next. Oh next. shit! So, so I'm I miss I miss next. that juicy. So so I miss the Mary Magdalene juicy, and I got the Mother <laughs> Teresa juicy. So that's what it was. Like you was a newbie. I used to. So so a lot of newbies they go gung ho. So it's like college. Like when you're a freshman in college, you want to go to all the parties and this and third. But by the time you're a junior. You're like, why the fuck I'm here? Like, you go, like, that's how I was when I went to college. I went to my last college party mm -hmm. and I'm like, why the fuck I'm here? Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> so I, want, I, I don't, I don't like to see a party where people's just standing around. So, you know, me and Hemrock or me and Paradise, you know, his wife, who, you know, we never even discussed that, but that was a whole nother situation. Um, we, we would get the party started. Oh, Juicy was getting it in. Let me find out. I yeah. had a whole, I had a whole love relationship with the three of them. Like we were together for. See, a, see. see I, I got the prude. I, I came across with the prude, Juicy, to the point where I had to fuck her friend, her bestie. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she had like she didn't want to give up the good. No, 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 no. I, maybe I just maybe it just went over my head. Like maybe that was just it. Like I wasn't catching it like i am a blonde at times so, so what about now though what exactly comes mm -hmm. that right oh okay okay no <laughs> I, 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 could, I could come in more ways than one you know so i come in your eyes and your mouth and, and the pussy and all that good stuff you gotta you better catch it though <laughs> so, 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 so when's the rendezvous you know wavy and juicy i don't you know, know. You tell me what's up Okay, I'm gonna tell you Valentine's Day. Uh, no. <laughs> See, look at that. See, sorry. See, I'm, see, listen, I'm, I'm this, occupied. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I'm I, this unavailable. Is, That's this, why I'm 
available. I'm entertaining some things too, you know? Even on weekends, even on the weekend. I, I am literally spoken for this uh, weekend. Wait. And have a special date on Valentine's Day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why, you know, Juicy, she's like in that special friend zone. You know what I'm saying? We talk our shit, you know, but I know she's not really about that life. So that, that's why I, I treat her like a friend because I could talk my shit, you know, I, I could, I could, I could, you know, test the waters and I know she's going to come up with a reason as to why she's not going to do anything. So that's why I'm talking my shit. I'm flirting because I but know that she's not about that life. You and Pocahontas did have something really cute though. That was only one fucking night and she fucked up my bed. I had to like <laughs> wash my mattress. It could have been more. We could have been born. You know, she left the game. You know, she no longer got her page. But anyway, so what's on the horizon now with Juicy? Well, one of one of the things that I'm talking about in regards to investment, like I'm not I'm not running from the LS. Like I wanna I wanna throw my own events. I I want I wanna be able to to kind of be I wanna do exactly what Silent King is doing in Atlanta, but up here in New Jersey, possibly. Uh, that's like, what I want. I'm not letting you off the hook. So mm -hmm. now, what's your favorite position? Okay, now, like, well, I'm telling you, when I say it's been a long time, wait, let me think. Well, well, well this weekend is not going to be a long be, time. It'll this probably weekend, be doggy style. Oh, okay. This weekend nothing, is not going to This weekend Nothing is, not is gonna happening this weekend. I promise you, oh, nothing is happening this weekend. Get the fuck out of here. Listen, if I take you out on, on a date, you fucking... Like we ain't doing that. See, you see, you see what? See that's that's where, that's where the the Mary Magdalene comes in, right? So when I go through this dating process, you know, with people who know that I'm in the lifestyle, I try my best not. I, so in certain people's heads, like, oh, she's in the lifestyle, so oh yeah, we fucking. And I, nah, we not. Like I just, I try my best to stay far away from that because i want you to enjoy it on a different level i mean of course there, there was a point that yeah if we if you fuck somebody you fuck somebody everybody had those nights everybody had those one night stands everybody had those hall passes at you know at one point in time but i really think that i'm a woman of a certain maturity right now right and i have dated nothing but vanilla guys over the past um it's not even a year yet right it's it's really been vanilla guys like i can't share so much of who i am with them yeah and that's and see that's what that's what i'm talking about like i gotta take my time with it and um honestly i i don't i'm not ashamed to say it i'm telling you i haven't been with a guy in a while you know I, I respect that because at the end of the day it's been months. at the end of the day you're human you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you, you have to let it flow you know yeah. i could go on a date with you i could go on a date with you without without the attention stuff up but by the end of the night you probably don't say something to the point where you 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 moisturizing my mind to the point where you moisturizing what's yeah. below right you know what i'm saying so you know what they say expectation is the mother of disappointment so right. yeah I, I most definitely feel you on that i most definitely feel you miss you yeah. so i'm definitely different now because you know i I, everybody can't know that right away. Everybody doesn't deserve that right away. Plus, and I and I read this on one of your posts. You said something like, you know, you would give up she, the life. She, she reads my posts. <laughs> you would you would basically give up the lifestyle to have and entertain a vanilla committed relationship, right? And you know, I read that and I and I'm and I said to myself like. I thought I could. I thought I could. I really did. I really did. But there is something about me and it and it's been in me forever. This is not I woke up as a teenager or I, I didn't wake up even in my twenties and was like, I like this and I want to be a part of this and I like girls and stuff. Like it's always been a feeling just like people don't wake up gay. Like I liked girls in first grade. Like it wasn't. I didn't wake up and was like, "Ooh, you know." That's so, not so in, in other words, the lifestyle is who you are, not something you do. Thank you, thank you. So that's why it became necessary for me to include all of my closest friends and my, like my cousins and stuff, because 
I don't ever want to be somewhere where I feel like I got to be fake. I got to be phony and or hide how I feel about something at that moment. So, you know, I kind of throw people into it, though. I don't have this subtle way of of letting people know who I am. I kind of just throw you in it and you're just like, what the fuck just happened? What was that? Did she just do that? Like, you know, I apologize to my friends after, but because they know who I am and they know how genuine it really is and how passionate I am about everything that I'm involved in, they're never offended. I've never been in a situation where anybody has ever been offended. Like, did you just kiss that girl? Did she just touch your butt? How about I put my friend I put my friend out <laughs> to this spot and there was this girl that I was meeting there and um, yo, she, my friend, the girl I am, my bestie, didn't know nothing. She didn't know nothing. I didn't tell her anything. And the girl that was meeting me there, she kept touching my bestie's booty. Like, and she just wouldn't, she wouldn't let it go. I'm like, yo, stop. She was like, what? I'm like, what? you know, like I had to keep dropping signals and it took for later on for me to be like, she doesn't know anything. She doesn't even know I like girls. And she was like, oh, why you didn't tell me? Because you're so comfortable with all your friends that I've been around. I was like, you know what? You're true. You're right. You're right. It's my fault. You know? And that's when I realized, like, everybody that comes around, like, I gotta, they gotta know. They gotta know. I don't want them. Like, I go on vacations with all my peoples. What if I meet something that I want to, you know, slide off with? So they gotta know. And um, that's just what it is. So... I don't think I could, I don't think I could be with somebody who's not ready to understand how comfortable I am. Wait, so is, is your, is the short haired chick with the blonde hair, is she still in the LS? Is Blondie still in the LS? I have, we haven't, let's just put it like this. I don't think that's ever something that's going to leave who she is either. I don't think so. But I don't think she's been to any events because we both met a bunch of people that night for the first time so we kind of rocked out with each other and went places together so i don't know if she's in contact with anybody that she's really going out with i don't i don't know i don't think so okay, so 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 what message would you give somebody when it comes to give, getting over a long-term breakup what message you you really need to understand that it is literally a day by day process that a breakup happens and tomorrow you're not going to be healed and happy like it's a process and sometimes even going through that process you think you're all right and you'll notice that something will happen that kind of pulls you back and says I'm not ready and you got to read that you got to you got to look out for those clues and 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 if your body telling you like it it happens because I have a girlfriend that's going through it right now she feels like you know I don't even have the urge to date. And I said, that's because you, you, you're not done with the breakup process. You're still healing and let it, let it see its way all the way out. You will get to a point where you're just like, oh, I, mm, cutie, let me go holler over here. Or I think I want to go on a date with him or a conversation with somebody. The dialogue starts to change where you're not necessarily brushing them off or making excuses so it is a day by day daily process you don't wake up happy tomorrow it it takes a while and for everybody that length of time is different so let that process play itself out and i promise you will know when the time is right you will feel it your body will tell you it's time and, and, and wavy and juicy needs a night Okay, just, uh, Juicy's, Juicy's into being courted. So where we going? What we doing? Where we going? Oh, well, I, I don't got the jab. So NYC is, is out. So <laughs> it, it had to be like Hoboken or something. Like one of them along the um, the river, them restaurants mm -hmm. along the river or some, or even some simple like Newark, like going out to eat or going to a bar or a lounge. It's not a bar, cool. going to a, like a lounge or something. Cool, cool, cool. So you're you're not in Queens. I'm sorry. Oh, you are? So, because I'm going to be in Queens in two weeks. Maybe you might come through to the party. Wait, who? Who? who who's doing that? They are not on anybody's Facebook pages. So, I'll tell you. I'll oh, tell see, you see, 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 yes, yes, because that's what's up, because that, that's the true underground. Oh, yeah. But, but, no. but, but that's why I tell people. A lot of people say that the, the lifestyle is not the same, but you have people who are operating off the grid. <laughs> we move off the grid like I said 
w- the pandemic happened, but let me see. We were in we were in um we were in Tennessee as a group. We had cabin trip to um um Silent Heat. I threw a party in Atlanta where I rented an Airbnb and all my closest friends was out there. So, you know, we still move together. We we even go bowling together where I live at. They'll come out here, we go bowling. They were out here for my birthday in December. My friends last year through the pandemic, we rented a house in Atlantic City. So mm. we we still move together. We'll see each other at least four times out the year, all of us. It depends on whose birthday, where we meeting up, what we doing. And mm. um, you know, we're all meeting up next next Friday. Okay. So so how do how do you like living from New York and Staten not Staten yeah, Staten Island and to Jersey? Jersey? What's the difference? Um, well, I mean, Staten Island is basically New Jersey, you know, it's, so it's definitely <laughs> an extension. I'm not too far in, so you know, I, I'm not in the sticks. My my best friend just bought a house about an hour out from Staten Island, and I love going out there, but I'm not too far, so it's the same. It's the same, but you know, cost of living is still a little cheaper over here in Jersey, certain things are still a little cheaper. Mm-hmm. You know, the utilities is definitely cheaper over here. And I know I probably want to talk about the taxes on the homes and stuff. I don't own where I'm living right now, but my rent is still cheaper than anybody in, in NYC. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, all the fellas out there, you know, when you're dealing with a woman like Miss, Ju- Miss Juicy, you just got to wait your turn. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> she's hot. She, she doesn't have a Rolodex. She has a uh, Holodex. Let me check my calendar. Hold on. Yeah, she has a Holodex. Hold on, let me just yeah. no, but you know what's crazy? There is somebody right now in the lifestyle who would like me to hang out with him and his wife. And he's just like, okay, so what about this day? And I'm like, hold on, let me chat. And I do this. I literally tell people, when you want to chill with me, you gotta we gotta set up a date. I, I don't just you can't just hit me up on Friday talking about what you're doing tomorrow. Because again, I am very involved in my community. I run a football organization. I have my own business, you know, that doesn't get as much love and as attention as it should, you know, but it does when I when I put into it. And I still work a nine to five because I've been in it for 16 years. And when I retire, like I need I need that, you know, I need a I needed a pension eventually. So, you know, I don't and I do a lot for my job. So I'm not sitting there waiting on all right, let me see what I'm gonna do. Like my calendar, literally right now, till the end of March is booked. Booked, I promise you. With every dates? Month, every, it's not just dates. Like for example, Missy's event is in March that weekend. I'm not going on a date with nobody that weekend. You know what I'm saying? So like, I have things going on. I just told you we're all together next weekend for another party. So so right as of right now, I, and I have a date Friday, and I have a date on Monday, right? But I also got to make time for self. That's the other thing that I always tell people. Like, when I feel that I need time for self, ain't n- nobody could compromise that. Nobody could compromise that. And it's because I do a lot. Like, I'm pretty sure you could tell you, like, but 7.30, right? You said 7.30. Because why? I know that I wake up at the crack of dawn. I'm up at 5 a.m. What it takes for a person like me to be functioning at 5 a.m., it requires a lot of sleep. And I also said I just lost 30 pounds. I'm also big on the the wellness that we give to our body that we lacked when we were certain age because I lose and transition in my sleep. It's just a known fact. Most of us do. If you want to be good to your body, eat right, work out right, right? Sleep, and I promise you, you can't, your body's gonna transition at night, especially if you take care of it properly. If you rest enough, you will. I look at the people who talk about their stress and they have these pouch bellies and stuff like that. Like, first of all, you're eating too much sugar. You're doing too much salt. You don't sleep. You, you're getting four hours of sleep. You don't let your body rest and heal to to treat you right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm big on that. I'm very, people say, oh, you, you do too much. You have OCD. No, it works. This schedule works for me right now, especially because I'm extremely busy and involved in so many things. So wavy and juicy this year. You tell me. Let's see. I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie. To you. I'm gonna say what I say to other people. I'm dating, and 
I don't mind going on a date. I don't mind. Um, whatever you want to do, let's do it. We'll ask, throw. I don't care what we do. We can sit at a diner and eat. I'm not, it doesn't matter to me, right? We could go to the library and whisper about something, you know. Um, I'm about getting to know people genuinely and um, and and that's just what it is. And I'm taking my time. I have people who have said to me, like, I'm not into a female who's dating other people. And I'm like, you don't have to be. What makes you uncomfortable with that? Some people might say, oh, because I don't know if you're sleeping with them. I said, well, I'm not sleeping with you, right? So, but I have to be that real because I just said to you, I haven't been with a man in a very long time. And, and that's by choice. I am choosing to not be intimate with anybody because I'm in this process where there's a bunch of people in the running that I have conversations with. And as soon as the conversation doesn't please me or doesn't give me any pleasure, I'm literally like, put you in the friend zone. In, in other words, it's not mine. It's just my turn. <laughs> and, and on that note, this has been another episode of Swinkers After Dark, and this is your host, Not Sun, baby. Check out my website at www.notsunblaze.com. That's www.nahsunblaze.com. And check out my ebook, Fuck. Yes, you heard right, Fuck, F U C K. It's on Nook, Kendall, Ibis, Google Play. Go get it and make you say, uh, na 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 na, ow. And shoot me an email at swingpodcast at gmail.com. That's swingpodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up with any questions or concerns. That you may have, have, have. Rate, share, subscribe, and comment on this podcast. Da, 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 dig. And on that note, until next time, peace. And it's not mine, it's just my turn. My turn. <laughs>